The moral case on Greece is easy to define, but hard to decide. Either an entire people are being reduced to poverty by misguided austerity, or a feckless borrower is trying to wriggle out of paying its debts. Both the Austerians on the creditor side and the supporters of Greek default think that the other side are deeply immoral. With less emotional arguments, somewhat ignore the ethics and focus instead on the moral hazard, the danger of encouraging bad behaviour. On the German side, the worry is that letting Greece off the hook by writing down its debts or by reducing demands for reform will lead to Spanish, Italian or Portuguese voters asking for similar treatment, or at the very least, prompt their governments to relax the efforts that they've been making on the reform side. On the Greek side, the argument is that the moral hazards already happened, as the so-called bailout of 2010 saw money flow from the creditors to Athens and straight back out again to French and German banks, rescued at the expense of Greece. Banks once again avoided bearing the costs of their poor lending decisions, and the burden really shouldn't be dumped entirely on the Greeks. But finding a compromise between these stories is never going to be easy, but it's made a lot harder when both sides are playing to domestic voters, who feel a simmering sense of unfairness, which happens to align exactly with their financial interests. Still, the markets are showing where the hazard lies in this moral hazard story, mainly in Greece. Greek two-year bond now has a higher yield, that's the blue line here, than it does price, which is the red line. As you can see, the price absolutely plummeted today in anticipation of a default at some point soon. Those willing to bet on compromise can finally bet it, buy in at a more reasonable level, assuming, that is, that they can find a seller in what's an extremely thin market. But I have to say, this is one of the few markets that's even more volatile than Chinese equities. And by contrast, there's been only mild contagion to the rest of the Eurozone. The Euro's slightly down at the moment, having at one point made back all of its early losses, while shares and peripheral bonds are both having a bad day, but not an appalling one. To put it in context, one measure of risk in the Eurozone periphery, shown here in blue, is the Italian 10-year bond spread above Germany. It's up and it's almost back to the high for the year that it hit last week, but it's still well below last autumn's level and nowhere near the peaks that it hit back in 2011 and 2012 when it looked as though the euro itself might break up. Italy's banks have been having a rather worse day than their government bonds. Bank shares in the region are back down now to their lowest since February. It's shown here by the red line. This is the Eurostox bank index. Now, investors who bought at the start of the year are still in the money because the price, even though it has come down a fair bit, is still up a lot from those lows. So this remains merely unpleasant, at least for now, not disastrous. Now, in part, there's still some hope of a compromise built into the prices here. Although, of course, if there is a compromise, then Greek bonds look like a screaming short-term buy at the moment. But mostly, the relative uh, level of optimism compared with the last time it looked as though the euro might break up is down to the widespread belief that a Greek default or exit from the eurozone would be survivable for the rest of the region, thanks to the European Central Bank and to the improved economies of Spain, Ireland, Portugal and Italy. By staying relatively calm, the markets are helping the creditor case, for now at least. Fear of moral hazard tends to dominate until an actual hazard appears most recently in the form of systemic bank failures or falling markets back in 2007, 2008, and then again in Europe in 2010, 2011, 2012. The hazards of Greece, believed for now at least to be isolated, the politicians outside Greece are free to concentrate on the moral case which best represents their constituents' financial interests. That makes compromise tricky.